You've most certainly seen a coma on a daytime soap opera or a nighttime soap opera that we watch now, or even more long-running science fiction series, dramas, action movies. Comas are everywhere, but outside of a TV trope, do you know what they are? Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to D News Today. I'm Trace. The word coma is based on a Greek word, meaning state of sleep. When the brain is injured or the blood flow from the rest of the body is cut off, conscious action is impaired. We call this a coma. When a person is in a coma, they are alive and will sometimes breathe on their own, but they won't respond to stimuli. The brain of a comatose person is active, but only at a base level. Someone comatose can't be woken up or perform any voluntary action. It's sort of like being asleep. The brain's oxygen supply can be cut off for any number of reasons. If the brain bounces around in your skull, you get a concussion, which causes swelling and cutting off blood flow. Blood vessels could tear, cutting off blood flow. Or an artery supplying the brain can get blocked, cutting off blood flow. Each will cause a coma. Diabetics can fall into a coma as well if blood sugar becomes too high or too low. There also are medically induced comas, though these aren't really comas. Regular ones are biological, but medical comas are basically long-term anesthesia. Doctors use drugs to keep people under, keeping the brain from swelling or the immune system from responding. I'm only gonna focus on the natural ones here. Every coma is different, depending on the part of the brain being starved. Some comatose patients will twitch, while others will not breathe on their own. The Glasgow Coma Scale assigns a ranking from three to 15, three being a deep coma and 15 being awake and responsive. If left alone, comatose patients would suffer brain damage and, assuming they can breathe, would eventually die of starvation without the ability to feed themselves. Doctors would normally put a comatose patient on IV nutrients and use ventilators to keep them breathing. Long term, the machines keep the patient alive while nurses move them around to avoid bed sores or muscle atrophy. On average, comas only last two to four weeks, but the longer the coma and the deeper it is, the less chance of the patient emerging or surviving. Because there is some brain activity, television would have us believe that patients could understand the outside world around them. But we can't confirm that's true for all coma patients. We can't interact directly to ask them, but we can scan their brains. A study in the 2010 New England Journal of Medicine looked at 54 patients in vegetative or minimally conscious states who were asked to imagine hitting a tennis ball and the quote, appropriate areas of their brain associated with hitting a tennis ball lit up. That was in 9% of them though. One patient was actually able to use that technique to answer yes or no questions. Although vegetative states aren't comas, they're similar. Comas are a little deeper, they require hospitalization, while patients in vegetative states can open their eyes, moan, they can be startled, cry, smile, make facial expressions, but they won't interact or have purposeful movement. So it's like a lighter version of a coma. Even lighter than that is minimal consciousness. When Israeli Prime Minister Ariel Sharon fell into a vegetative state after a stroke, functional MRI scans were taken to assess his brain activity while his son spoke to him and also while he was being shown pictures of his family. The scans revealed that Sharon had, quote, robust brain activity. Not that that really means much, because fMRIs don't tell us what's happening in the brain, just where blood is flowing. But it does count for something. An early 2015 paper published in Neural Rehabilitation and Neural Repair found comatose patients who heard the voices of their families four times a day for six weeks recovered consciousness significantly faster and had an improved recovery. Unfortunately, there's no treatment to wake someone from a coma. Some wake and some don't. Diabetic comas can be ended relatively quickly with treatment, but brain impacts or clots can take a lot longer. Comas are not all just one thing. People on the Glasgow scale at three to five are in the deepest of comas with minimal activity and often never recover. But people from 11 to 15 can be nearly awake and conscious. In the end, the length of a coma depends on the severity of the brain injury. And after regaining consciousness, doctors will have to assess lasting impact on the brain's starvation. Parts of the brain could be damaged beyond repair, causing permanent physical and mental disability. But afterward, all coma patients will need physical and mental therapy to fully restore their functions. It's rare, but people can completely recover. Have you ever been in a coma or know anyone who has been? Tell us down in the comments, it's super interesting. Also, in a coma, 
you're unconscious, but sometimes the base body functions are still working, which means you would grow hair. Maybe not as rapidly or thickly as a normal person would, but regardless, when you wake up, you're gonna need a shave. Harry's starter kits contain great razor blades, shave gel or cream, and a pretty handle. And they're delivered right to you, even in your hospital bed, for less than those blades are at the store. Go to harrys.com and use coupon code DNews for $5 off your starter kit and get your freshly shorn face on. I think brain injuries are, like I said, super interesting. But can a brain injury make you a genius? My girl Annie scans the research in this video right here. A guy in North Dakota had a severe concussion along with memory loss, headaches, and 35% hearing loss in one ear. But just days after the accident, he found that he gained virtuosic piano ability. He had never touched a piano in his life before that. Thanks you all for watching. Subscribe so you get all of our videos every day. And we'll see you next time on D News.